Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, I want to talk about the problem with the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, or the MBTI for short. I make this video knowing that many people can find value and meaning in the classic MBTI, and understanding that many people receive reassurance and support from knowing their own personality type. I just believe that the system, despite of this, does more harm than good. Perhaps you're new to the MBTI and the 16 personality types, or perhaps you've been studying it for quite some time now. This video can help you understand how the MBTI really works and what the problem with the MBTI really is. I believe the classic MBTI can be easily dismissed. It is very stereotypical and superficial. It focuses only on small, sometimes occurring patterns in a personality type. It makes general what is specific, and specific what is general. It makes vague what is simple, and simple what is complex. So often I find I have as much in common with the MTI as I would have with the dice thrown at random. The MTI does not work and is not an accurate metric of personality psychology. It cannot predict human interests or motivations. It cannot accurately understand what people really think and what they really feel underneath the persona or mask that they might carry in social settings or at their workplace. So no matter what result you get on the personality type test in the MTI, the dichotomies and how they are applied have very little to do with science. Many of the personality traits the MTI will define as consistent and stable will change every other six months. And the MTI will take socially developed personality traits that change from moment to moment. They will take culturally prevalent behavior that has been taught to you by your family and your traditions and your system. And they will make it seem relevant to your core personality and who you really are on the inside. And now I want to first start with focusing on the problem with the dichotomies of the MTI. Introversion, extroversion, intuition, sensing, feeling, thinking, judging, perceiving. The biggest criticism I can raise against the MTI is directed against the dichotomies and how they have come to be applied. I believe no personality trait can be understood alone and all have to be taken in context of the individual person you are talking to. There is no introvert, but there is an introverted intuitive feeling and perceiving personality type. This type is only going to be as introverted as they are intuitive feeling or perceiving. And what I mean with this is, this type is not going to be as introverted in situations that require sensing, thinking or judging. It's because of this that the cognitive function approach is so much more accurate than the, than the dichotomy approach. There is no pure thinking type, no pure judging type, no pure extrovert. A person's personality is a harmony of many different complex personality traits that come together as one. To understand a person, you have to understand them as a complex combination of many factors. And you have to be able to factor them in together to truly understand how a person will act or feel or deal with a specific situation. Now the second issue I have with MTI is the Forer effect. The MTI relies very heavily on the Forer effect. So no matter what result you get on an MTI test or how correct your result is, the personality description is written to be as relatable as possible. This means it will take general personality traits that are true to a large or huge majority of the population and then they will make these personality traits seem specific to you personally and to your personality type. What's even worse is it will take things that are actually specific to your personality type and to the personality type you got on the personality test and it will make it described so generic it will lose its actual meaning. So in doing so it makes vague but it's actually simple and takes away takes a complex personality trait or cognitive function and makes it too simple. For example it will take extroverted sensing and it will reduce it to a love of sports and outdoor activity and it will take introverted intuition and reduce it to having a sudden aha insight something any person in the world will have at some point in their life. 
Now, the MTI has a deep struggle against personality relativity. That means any personality trait can manifest in any personality type, depending on the context and situation. Any person can have an high insight. That comes right out of nowhere, and any personality type can find themselves enjoying sports or outdoor activities if it's with the right people or if you're in the right mood or mindset. This relativity, it's never addressed, and the MTI never really makes an attempt to place these experiences in context. What do you like about sports? What gives you energy? Why and when will it give you energy? In what situation and for what reason? There is no actual psychology happening in the MTI. There is no genuine attempt to understand the actual thinking or motivation of a person. Things are just described and assigned to a personality type at random using little to no attempt to understand it for this given personality type. So all of this makes the MTI subject to the four effect, which means on any given day, any MTI statement is too generic and any question on the personality type test too relative to be given a straight and honest answer. The only way to get the same result on a personality test twice is if you know the system so well that you can game the conclusions. So most of the time this will happen unconsciously. As soon as you start figuring out the certain meaning of a word, you will game the test to get the result you want. A lot of people fall in the trap of this and don't even realize it happens. The third issue is the problem with how the MTI has come to be applied. So the MTI is applied in workplaces and in relationships and it's applied in coaching and to understand the self. When we type and test other people using the MTI with such a stereotypical method, we can game the results so other people come out as the type we want them to be. If we had doubts or experienced conflicts in a relationship, we will often change our opinion about the person's type to match the conflict and the issue we feel we are having with the person. If we notice somebody is struggling with work performance at our company, we may begin to assume it is because they have the wrong personality type. Yeah, often the results people get in our workplace on the personality test is a reflection of our opinion of them as people. Natural hierarchies and stereotypical egotistical notions about which personality type does the best and has the right skill set have come to become so big. We don't understand the nature or the importance of personal development. Beliefs that there is a best fit relationship match or a best fit personality type of an employee or a boss feed into the idea that skill and ability is genetic rather than something we can develop or personally influence. When, of course, we can develop skills, we can become more outgoing, we can become better in social settings, we can develop technical skills, we can learn new languages, we can improve our ability at maths, we can become more outgoing and sportsy, we can be different than what we are today. We are capable as humans of change to a large but not necessarily complete degree. So all in all, MTI often ends up doing more damage than harm. You know, those articles out there that describe the best match of your personality type, those have probably caused more breakups than they've caused people to find the right partner. Uh, it gives the idea in relationships that there are impossible conflicts that can never be solved because of our differences in personality. It suggests that our workplace performance cannot be influenced by better management, better communication, better leadership. In fact, there is very little content online on how to communicate better with an INFP partner, how to help an INTP do better in a management position. Articles on personality development in MTI tend to be very unpopular, if not completely ignored, in part because articles on development challenge the very idea of the MTI. If we can develop ourselves, what really stops us from actually being able to change our type? Because the MTI believes type is fixed, it also automatically avoids thinking about how a personality can change. The primary idea of the MTI is that our personality type 
is what we tend to act like and how we tend to appear to friends, family members and co-workers. On personality tests that measure MTI, we are asked about what we tend to do and how our friends tend to perceive us. This is supposed to give us a strong answer on who we are, when in reality we can act in many ways that go against how we appear. Now, this whole idea of the MTI can be dismissed very easily, because we are constantly different. We act differently in every different situation. We act differently to certain friends than we do with others. We act differently at our workplace than we do at our school or how we acted around our family members. These changes are natural, but we tend to ignore them. The more set and the more convinced we become of the validity of the MTI, the more we start to ignore or pretend not to note this, how complex our personality is. We become the stereotypes we think we are, and we start acting more like the stereotypes, thinking this is the only version of us, the only real version of us. And this can cause us to make a lot of terrible mistakes, perhaps switching educations, perhaps uh, breaking up in a relationship, perhaps uh, giving up on some friendships, just to accommodate our personality description and what we've read about us, what we've heard people describe us as. The MTI descriptions sound so sweet, so easy to relate to, so reassuring, we want to hold on to them. The stereotypes we form about the people we dislike, they feel so easy and reassuring. We really don't want to understand other people, we want to explain them. In as simple as stereotypical ways as possible. We want a quick explanation to why other people are idiots. And that's why perhaps one of the books uh, on the disc in Sweden is called Surrounded by Idiots. It's a book full of gloss stereotypical explanations of why everyone else around you is an idiot. Except you, of course. The system I've been throwing around for years now... It might sound like it's a simple MBTI rebrand like any other, but New Jungian typology is something I've been working on for more than 8 years. It's my some experience trying to fix the MBTI using a combination of my experiences with different personality systems, taking the best out of them all, understanding and finding out what the good is and what the bad is. I've been using the Enneagram, the MBTI, DISC and practical lessons from psychology to develop a system that is more dynamic and less prone to stereotypes and more focused on real and st stable and consistent personality traits. Neo Jungian typology is about understanding what people are like in flow as opposed to what they are when they are stressed or anxious. I know people can be different in different situations, but I believe everyone has something they prefer, something they enjoy more when they are in a position of flow, when they are at their best. So I want to tell people to understand each other's as a sum harmony of different personality traits. And I want people to look at how different personality traits come together in one person. And I want to understand, I want to help people understand that these traits, they are the most visible when a person is at their best. I want to be able to really predict the person's psychology, not just their perceived behavior, but their psychology, what they're actually thinking, what they're actually feeling, what their actual reasoning is. This can help me communicate better with them, this can help me understand them better, this can help me become a better coach, a better leader, a better friend, a better partner. Systems like the MTI will be around for as long as people seek to understand personality types and personality psychology. That's why I believe in the end it's better to try to fix it than to just say don't use it. I mean stereotypes have been around since forever, long before the MTI. I hear a lot of people snigger about how the bad the MTI is, only to echo stereotypes about blonde women or overweight guys with their next breath. Can we ever escape stereotypes and lazy assumptions about one another? To take an example, I read every week. I've read more than 16 books just in the last months. Last four months. I like to read because it gets me deeper inside the head of every individual personality type. Nowhere can you get as deep inside a person's mind as when you're reading. 
In a good book, it's all put out there. Every thought, every insecurity, every fear, it's all there. Reading illuminates human nature and shows people like we never really get to see them in real life. I mean, we can, it's one thing to describe the assumptions and the behavior of the person as we observe it. It's another thing to explain the reasoning and the thought process behind the behavior that we observe. So now, after learning about MBTI, I encourage you to start learning about Jung's original cognitive functions and about neo Jungian typology. I encourage you to put personality in the context of flow and happiness. And I want encourage you to start exploring personality development and personal growth. I encourage you to have a more dynamic view of yourself and of other people and of people's many different personality traits. And I encourage you to stop using the MTI and to stop relying on easy, simple dichotomies and stereotypical beliefs about different people and personality types. Thanks a lot for watching and see you all in the next video.